Okay, we go to kidney cancer. I have a short case. A 63-year-old patient incidentally diagnosed in uh, February 2010 with T3A and XMH renal cell carcinoma and uh, uh, laparoscopic right radical nephrectomy was performed. The macroscopic pathological examination is a large tumor, nine centimeter in diameter in the middle of kidney, and the insection is gold yellow and hemorrhagic. And the microscopic pathological examination were cleared cell renal carcinoma, four mangrave three, with areas of dystrophic calcification and pseudosarcomatose change, measuring nine centimeter in maximal diameter. The tumor invades into the renal pelvis, coming to within 0.5 centimeter to the renal helium, and the tumor invades through the renal capsule, focally into perinephric fat. In the total body CT scan was normal except the kidney. And the first question is, what is the best therapeutic option for this patient? If he plays the adjuvant treatment or no? And the second patient, what are some of the key trials for adjuvant therapy of kidney cancer? Please, go. Um, there are many adjuvant trials for kidney cancer for patients like this with T3 uh, or node positive. We don't have the results of any of, any of those trials yet. Um, we have, um, most of the trials are with um, uh, the new TKIs. I've participated very actively in the, the one with adjuvant pansofenib versus observation. There's the SOURCE trial in England with serafinib looking at three years versus one year. There's an American trial um, in, also with serafinib. Uh, there's um, a few trials with sunitinib. There's a trial with uh, everolimus also, an adjuvant. Practically all of these trials had to lower the dose uh, of the therapy uh, in the patients. So we don't have the results yet, but they've had to lower the dose in the patients. And we don't know if this is because patients with metastatic disease are more motivated to, to take these treatments and to have the side effects of the treatments than patients that are may be cured by, uh, by the nephrectomy. Or another theory could be that patients with metastatic disease, they have tumor to take up the, the, um, the molecules and they don't, and the people who have no disease have, really do have more toxicity. But in every one of the trials, it's been systematic from the American trials to the, the, um, the Sopinov trial that I've actively participated as a steering committee member, we've had to lower the dose of the adjuvant therapy. And most of the trials are, are given adjuvant therapy for one, one year. But at this moment, we don't have any evidence, um, uh, level one evidence, to give adjuvant uh, TKIs or everolimus to any of these patients. The same with the immunotherapy trials that have been um, reported. Ari Beldegren reported last year a, a trial with an anti-CA9. Uh, those trials have been either not reported yet or have been clearly negative. So we don't really have, in my mind, any evidence of any treatment that we need to give this patient. Please. Uh, one question to you, to the surgeons. So some centers, including ours, would do actually in part of the protocols biopsies. And sometimes we get the pathology report that there's a sarcomatoid differentiation. Would you have known that there was a sarcomatoid? Would have you have changed your surgical approach? What about the lymph nodes? Surgeon. The question is to me. Uh, I, I think the role of lymph node dissection is not very well defined in the case of uh, renal cell carcinoma. But to improve the staging, at least, uh, we should do, in a case like that where the tumor is quite extensive, you have to remove the uh, lymph nodes alongside the great vessel, uh, which side, uh, depending on which side the tumor is located on, just uh, to uh, have a better idea what is the risk of further uh, uh, progression rate of this patient. But other than that, the role of um, uh, lymph node dissection in terms of curing the disease uh, is not uh, very well defined in uh, renal cell carcinoma. Gennady? Yeah, so if you look at the Mayo data, the, this patient appears to have a high chance of at least, and sounds like a pre upper image, it's 9 centimeters. So it's likely a, a, a tumors greater than 10 centimeters, tumors greater, uh, having necrosis, high grade. Those are very common features that you can see with tumors greater than 9, 10 centimeters. So, and out of there are five factors, 
uh, this patient would have about 12 to 14 percent chance of node positive disease. So on preoperative image, even without pathology given to me intraoperatively, I would go ahead and proceed with lymph node uh, dissection. And again, this is understanding that this may not be a therapeutic, but at least for staging purposes. And most importantly, uh, in this patient, I would also perform uh, a template that has now been described by Paul Crispin, also based on MAID data in terms of where the nodes are located, which would include ipsilateral great vessel as well as uh, intra aortocaval uh, lymph nodes. Okay, we propose the patient as a extract tri clinical trial, but the patient not included because a low left ventricular ejection fraction is 46 percent. And the question is, is, can markers be identified prospectively that would help to predict likelihood of relapse or benefit to therapies? You mean systemic therapies? Please. Well, uh, first of all, regarding adjuvant uh, decision, no. Uh, regarding metastatic disease, uh, although there are several prospective uh, trials looking at it, uh, several serum tissue markers to find out uh, what kind of drug we should use or what kind of patient should benefit, uh, SNPs, uh, uh, all kinds of things have been tested and there is no real biomarker that is uh, routinely used to predict how, uh, how patients will go on uh, and which drug should be used. May I just mention something about the S-TRAC trial? For those who don't know, S-TRAC is a trial of adjuvant um, uh, sunitinib versus observation. And, there, and one of the things that happened in that trial was that they would restage the patient bef before starting, and they found that many of these patients, uh, especially this one you can see with aggressive disease, had metastatic disease, so they were no longer eligible. And sunitinib it can be cardiotoxic, so that what you're showing in the echocardiogram, if you were not uh, uh, didn't have a, a good echocardiogram, he was not eligible for the trial anyway. But many of these patients, and they had a problem with the trial with that and had to increase the numbers they, because so many patients were found to be metastatic. Dr. Peer, is the, uh, is the amount of uh, necrosis something that would drive your management? So simple parameters in addition to uh, sarcomatous features? Uh, okay. At the moment, um, outside clinical trials, um, we don't use any markers for adrenal therapy, of course. Uh, um, until recently, we had um, a multiple sites um, um, clinical trials for adrenal therapy available, and we certainly encourage those patients with high risk uh, uh, to participate in trials. I think um, in my feeling it's inevitable that, um, along with other um, metastat other diseases, uh, kidney cancer as well will. Um, may go in the path of a genomic analysis uh, as recently presented in the ASCO meeting. There are some uh, genetic markers that may be a predictor for uh, recurrence and this uh, combined with the results of the clinical trials may affect how we uh, consider adjuvant treatment in the future. Of course, uh, right now it's uh, certainly premature. And I'd like to add, and I do some genetic work and we have a lab and I believe in gene expression signature and profile and the proteomics. But this patient, very importantly for surgeons and at least for physicians to realize, this patient failed miserably because this is through and through tumor. This patient has renal sinus fat invasion and I know it because you said it invaded renal pelvis and this patient also invaded perinephric fat. This is through and through tumor. There is plenty of literature even in urology and quote unquote urologic pathology literature that shows that these patients are not really T3 tumors. These patients behave more like T4 tumors. These patients are not in a 40% failure rate. They're in a 70% failure rate. So if there is a patient who belongs to the adjuvant trial, even excluding all the trials, and excluding, I'm sorry, all the markers and prognostic signatures, these are the patients that we need to put. And if his uh, ejection fraction is low for uh, S-TRAC trial, he can go on uh, uh, adjuvant Everolimus trial, uh, although it's, of, of course, still uh, 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 an adjuvant TKI trial. Okay. In February 2014, the left paravertebral mass, 4 to 3 centimeters with vertebral destruction, was diagnosed, and the biopsy showed metastatic carcinoma, probably of kidney origin, renal cell carcinoma. What is the best therapeutic option for this patient? 
I think we will need to repeat his cardiac function and to see if it's improved any, any because we, we have risk with, with the TKIs that are currently available um, to have a problem with cardi cardiac function with uh, these okay. patients. I'm sorry, and is this the, I apologize, is this the only side of his metastatic disease? Yes. And this yes. is two years out? Four. Four years out. This Four patient years is, out. This the patient is repeat left ventricular ejection fraction was 44%, <coughs> and we started sunitinib, 37.5 milligram. Today, the patient ended the third cycle. The ventricular rejection fraction is stable, 44, 45%. And the last question is, <coughs> if the patient not respond, what is the next treatment when we can give for this patient? I, I agree with the thing. Was this patient possibly operable? Because maybe in a patient with a, a low left ejection fraction, if he had been operable two years out, I think that might have been a, a, perhaps a better option than giving cardiotoxic therapy to a person with a low ejection fraction at a reduced dose of sunitinib. So I think we need to kind of know that first. He was inoperable? No, he's inoperable. Why yeah. was he inoperable? Because the uh, uh, blood vessels and the or, uh, orthopedist and surgeon will not. So and and uh, to, to go along surgeon. that line, um, there are more and more in, in literature and trials with uh, radiation therapy in, in renal cell in oligomets. Yeah. Do you have any experience and can you share, especially because he has a high risk of relapse, a distance, but at the same time because of the time interval. He, he behaves as something which is potentially curable, so? I, I think if he has a single metastasis, we have to evaluate the place of it, or how big it is, and if he could be operated or have radiation uh, th therapy localized before I would go on to sunitinib, if possible. Levant and Gennady. I think anyone in this room would uh, agree on the fact that renal cell carcinoma is curable today by complete surgical removal of uh, any lesions, uh, that if that is possible. So in a case like that, I would, uh, if he's operable, I mean, looking at the ejection fraction, it may be a problem, but if he's operable, I think that is the only chance of his cure, the complete removal of any uh, lesion. And given the fact that that was only a single site of relapse, he would have a great possibility of uh, achieving a long-term uh, response. Uh, in terms of radiation therapy, I think uh, we should consider it still experimental. Uh, I think the data in the literature is not uh, strong enough to, uh, uh, to approve its routine use uh, in renal cell carcinoma. And, and one question, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, I just want to make a comment and a question to the, the panel. Uh, there was a, a certain amount of sarcomatoid component in the, in the, in the surgery. Um, I probably believe that it's an uh, undifferentiated tumor. Um, the time between uh, the relapse and the surgery was quite good, four years, uh, I believe. Uh, Cora, would you, would you do a biopsy on this uh, side of metastasis to know if there's like more sarcomatoid component on I, this? I think it seems to be in a difficult place to biopsy. I don't know that it would change. In, in biopsy, we not see the sarcomatoid component. Biopsy the biopsy. metastasis, no, only renal cell carcinoma. P plus the biopsy. But, but the, the problem is she is soft tissue and the D8 vertebra and, is involved by tumor. And also the size of the tumor is a problem. You cannot yes. uh, evaluate the whole mass uh, with a single uh, core biopsy. Okay. Thank, Thank thanks. You. Uh, thanks, the panel, for uh, the exciting cases, and uh, thanks everyone for the contribution.